Hi, it's Monday and the start of our seventh week, the next to last week of our Intro to New Testament with the Center for Ministry and Lay Training at Phillips Theological Seminary, PTS Tulsa. Well, we are ending up with four of what we call the Catholic epistles, the general epistles. They're called the Catholic epistles. You might think of them as the little c Catholic, meaning universal. Uh, uh, those of you that are familiar with the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I remember being a little girl and asking my dad, or not actually when we would say the Lord, or the Apostles' Creed every week, I would say to my dad, I'm not saying that. I don't believe in the Catholic Church. We're we're United Presbyterians. And he said, no, no, honey, it's it means universal. Okay, so these are what are considered to be the universal epistles, letters that they were sent out. And as you noticed, perhaps in our not so trivial trivia this week, the um, this whole set, uh, these letters are not just like the first, second, and third John, which are also considered to be general epistles. They are named for the persons who, um, to whom uh, authorship is attributed. How about that? Well, I'm, I, I've got my notes on another screen, so you're going to see me looking kind of funny as I read through these, perhaps. So, um, James and Jude were, oh, and the ones we're looking at are James, Jude, and uh, the first and second epistles of Peter. Okay, so James and Jude, as you may know, are Jesus's brothers, two of Jesus's brothers. And Peter is, I think, Jesus's, I think of him as Jesus's best disciple, his best student, and, uh, and really his best friend, right? Peter's always there with him. Uh, in Peter, we get to see what a struggle it is to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus, to live the way Jesus teaches, because even Peter falls down short. That's a whole other story, though, isn't it? Well, uh, let's look at James first. James was probably written by Jesus' brother James, um, and at least that's who the early church unanimously believed. And, and that being the case, it was likely written between 45 and 60 A.D. Many scholars, though, think it's a pseudepigraphal work, right? A work that was written by someone else in his name, James's na name, um, that came from a later time, in fact, during the second century. So up there in the 100s uh, is, is their conjecture. Now, Martin Luther called this a straw gospel and said this is not really a letter. It's not really a gospel. It doesn't doesn't really contain anything Christological. And so he just wanted to set it completely aside. Um, the, the reason for thinking it may not be pseudepigraphal, just a couple of them out there. Um, uh, they note that James is written in very good Greek, that it uses the Greek translation of Jewish scriptures and it uses uh, Greco-Roman rhetorical features like uh, uh, diatribe, right, ways of talking. But on the other hand, the letter uh, lacks the features that typically appear in pseudonymous. Here we go again. Pseudon pseudonym pseudonymous. Oh, my gosh. In false apostolic literature. Um, and, and in this case, the author is very familiar with Judean life and with the Jewish traditions, leading us to, you know, consider Jesus's family. I want you, as you're reading it uh, this week, you're reading the, uh, the reports, the sharings, the, um, the work of those who are studying it, uh, presenting for us, if you will. I want you to watch for those pieces that um, what it, you know, the uh, evidence for and evidence against authorship, uh, look for parallels between James and the Sermon on the Mount. 
these ideas here, these come from N.T. Wright. So watch for parallels between James and the Sermon on the Mount. And, and, and also be watching for the relationship between James' thought uh, uh, idea of justification and Paul's idea of justification, what it takes to be, we might say, saved, what it means to, uh, what it means to be um, a follower of Jesus. But even more than that, uh, what it means to be adopted um, uh, into God's family, to, to really be a Christian. Okay, so Jude, now Jude is uh, also, as I said, written by whom's believed to be uh, one of Jesus's brothers, but it's a little more questionable. Uh, traditionally, it may have been written by Jude the brother. Uh, if that's the case, it was written sometime between the 50s and the 90s. How's that for for a stretch? Uh, I want you to, to really look at that. What are some of the arguments uh, against that or evidence that that is not the case? And watch out uh, in here. Watch for the Jewish influence on Jude's work. Um, N.T. Wright again says that there it, you can see evidence of um, a Apocryphal Jude, Jewish writings that if indeed it's Jude or whomever wrote it, uh, who or whoever wrote it, uh, look for those uh, apocryphal uh, evidence of apocryphal Jewish writings. Kind of interesting, isn't it? And um, and look for that significance. Why? Why is that important? Let's. I mean, talk about some textual criticism there and, and source criticism. First and Second Peter. Um, Peter. It's generally believed Peter probably wrote First Peter, uh, and if that's the case, it was written between the 50s and early 60s. If not, it was probably written somewhere between 80 and 110. Again, one of these broad reaches. Second Peter, though, is pretty much believed, um, agreed that it was uh, pseudepigraphal and written between 150 and 200. That's really late. Now we're, you know, we're talking over a hundred years after Jesus's death. So I want you to look at, at why, what's that evidence? What, what is believed? What difference does it make if it's written between 150 and 200? Watch for evidence of predestination. This whole concept of predestination it's um, this is a, a chosen an elect a select um, that God decides who gets in uh, and who does not which says that some of us have not been predestined to to live there into eternity with with Jesus with God uh, look for um, Peter's thinkings on new birth new heaven new earth and um, and there's some evidence that Second Peter and Jude used similar sources, or maybe even some of the same sources. So look and see if you can see the commonality or find something in the commonalities be or in common between uh, Jude and Second Peter. And then how does each emphasize that, that material? So, you know, what are the commonalities and yet what are the differences, if there are any? Well, you all are amazing. You remain amazing. I can't wait to see what you do. Uh, I will see you on the discussion boards. And if you're available, of course, I will see you on Saturday morning's end of week session. For now, though, I'm going to let you go. Hope that you have a really great week. Have fun. I hope you're having fun with all this, even though I know it's a lot of work. And just to acknowledge that, um, I know you are putting hours into to, um, into what you're studying, into what you're finding, into what you're sharing. Oh my goodness, not just even what you're presenting, but what you're finding and, and co-presenting with your course mates. So thank you so much. I, uh, again, I'm going to see you on the boards and uh, have a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye.